This week we're going to look at a couple more applications of graphs, and then we're going to look at a way to maximize profit. But first, we're going to continue our graph theory study by considering minimum cost spanning trees. Now, last week we found uh, Hamiltonian cycles with the goal of finding a Hamiltonian cycle of least cost, Hamiltonian circuit of least cost. And we had some algorithms that didn't necessarily give us the least cost Hamiltonian cycle, but they potentially got us close. So here, we're going to find what are known as minimum cost spanning trees, and we're going to use an algorithm which does always give a minimum cost spanning tree. What's a minimum cost spanning tree? Well, minimum cost, lowest cost, spanning tree, spanning tree. What's a tree? Well, we have this definition. Definition, a tree is a connected graph with no cycles. Okay. No cycles, and it's a graph, and it's connected. It's in one piece, it's a connected graph. Great. What's a spanning tree? Well, I, before even going to this example, here's an example of a tree. You know, something like this would be a tree. No cycles, and it's in one piece. There's an example of a tree. And you can kind of see it almost sort of looks like a tree. Or maybe I've been in math too long. Um, it kind of looks like a tree. But it is in one piece and has no cycles. That's all it needs to be a tree. Um, even one small cycle makes it not a tree. But what's a spanning tree? Well, a spanning tree is a subgraph of an original graph, which is a tree and which hits all of the vertices. So a subgraph of a graph that is a tree containing all vertices of the original graph is called a spanning tree. Um, so let's look at this graph. And let's look at um, a spanning tree. Let's look at a... Um, uh, let's look at uh, some things that aren't spanning trees. So we have this graph. What if we chose this? I'm just going to fill in a subgraph over here. So we have those eight vertices. What if we chose this subgraph right here? If we choose this, well, it's a tree. There are no cycles. Uh, 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 uh. It's not a tree because although there are no cycles, it's not connected. So not a tree. Notice it does hit all of the vertices. So it does span in the sense that it hits all the vertices, but it's not a tree. So it's not a spanning tree. So it's not a tree since it's not connected. Well, OK. How about this one on the, these eight vertices? What if we chose this? We chose this right here. Well, again, it does hit all the vertices, so it spans, but it's not a tree. Why is it not a tree? Well, it has this cycle up here on A, B, C, and D. So I'll say because of the cycle. The cycle, the circuit. Um, uh, I guess I've been using the word circuit. Circuits and cycles are the same, so I, I should change this definition to circuit. Um, and, and you know, I took one graph theory class um, in grad school, and they were always called cycles. And our textbook uses circuits, so I'm using circuit. Um, but it's my instinct to say cycle, also because it's fewer letters. Um, so it's not a tree because of the circuit up there. What about this next example? Or this next uh, subgraph, I should say. Uh, how about... So we again have those eight vertices. What about this one? Right there. 
Well, that is a tree. There are no cycles, and it's in one piece. So tree, but it's not a spanning tree because it doesn't hit this vertex. So a spanning tree is a tree that hits all vertices. And what about this last one? I called it the last one, so you should probably expect that it will be a spanning tree. So what if we chose this? What if we chose this right here? Well, it hits all the vertices. It has no cycles. It's in one piece. So right here, we have an example of a spanning tree. So um, a spanning tree is a subgraph of the original graph. It hits all the vertices. It has no cycles. And it's in one piece. And we're going to look at some examples. So in, in this, uh, these first few drawings, we didn't have costs on the edges. Um, but let's look at some examples where we have costs on the edges. Um, so example, I guess I could erase these definitions. Let's use the whole board for this example. Example. The graph gives links in a cable TV network and costs, cost does not start with a G, and costs to create each link. Um, and our goal will be provide, uh, provide, uh, my spelling is really, really bad in this class for some reason. You know, I'm, I'm doing these videos also for um, a calculus class, and I have very few misspellings in that class. I feel like every board I have something misspelled here. I don't know why. Um, provide service between any pair of locations while minimizing total cost. So I need to give you a graph. So it'll be a graph with five vertices. It'll be a complete graph on five vertices because we can uh, create a link between any two locations. Um, I'm going to use a different marker, but I'm going to use a new marker so it's darker. Um, I, I should also keep that blue one near me because I'm probably going to need a blue one. Um, so this graph gives links in a cable network. That marker's not new. What's wrong? Okay. This graph gives links in a cable network. And the cost to create a link between two locations. And we want to be able to provide um, service between any two locations. Um, so we have these five, let's call them A, B, C, D, E. Let's complete the graph. Um, and let's give the costs. So this cost is seven. The cost to create that link is five. The cost to create that link is nine. The cost to create this link is 16. The cost to create this link, 13, 12, 14, 6, 15, and 8. So we have 
5, 9, 6, 15, 14, 13, 12, 7, 8, 16. Well, let's look at what we're doing here. I need this. Uh, we're trying to provide service between any pair of locations while minimizing the total cost. So if we want to provide service between, say, uh, what's the most expensive one here? Between B and C, well, you could create B and C, or, I guess this wasn't the best example. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a better example. Yes, okay, let's say we're trying to produce a, a link between B and D instead. So between B and D. We want to provide service between B and D. Well, we could do it directly using this cost of 15. But we could also route our path through A. Because connecting B to D directly would be 15. But we could instead connect B to A to D at a cost of 14. Um, so we want to provide service between any pair of locations. That doesn't necessarily mean that we need to create each loc each uh, we need to uh, create each link. We need to provide service between any pair of locations. Well, how can we do that? Well, what we need to find here is a spanning tree, a tree which hits all of the vertices. A cycle is unnecessary for our purposes here, but if we have a tree in here where it's all connected in one piece that hits all of the vertices, we'll be able to create a path between any pair of vertices. So we need to find, for this example, find a minimum cost spanning tree. This goal could be translated into find a minimum cost spanning tree. How do we find a minimum cost spanning tree? Well, we can try something like the sorted edges algorithm. List these all in order of increasing cost and then add them as we go until we can't add them. In finding Hamiltonian circuits, that method did not necessarily give the minimum cost spanning tree, or the minimum cost Hamiltonian circuit. But with spanning trees, that exact method will give a minimum cost spanning tree. Um, I'll put this on one board. Um, and that algorithm for uh, applied to spanning trees, uh, minimum cost spanning trees, is called Kruskal's algorithm. Named after Kruskal a mathematician from, I believe, the 60s, the 1960s. Um, a lot of this math that we're doing now, Hamilton, well, Euler was the first one we mentioned. Euler was from the 1700s. Hamilton was from, I believe, mid-1800s. Um, but a lot of what we're going to do from now through the end of the semester, well, some of what we do from now to the end of the semester, is stuff that was actually just discovered in the 1900s, which is very recent as far as math history is concerned. Um, you know, a lot of the math that you cover in college is from the 17, the 16, 17, and 1800s. Um, but this algorithm here, Kruskal's algorithm, was about 60 years ago. And what does the algorithm stay, say? Well, add links in order of cheapest cost. add links in order of cheapest cost so that no circuits form and so that every vertex belongs to some link added. Now, it's not exactly the same as the sorted edges algorithm, because in the sorted edges algorithm, you couldn't visit the same thing three times. 
but here you can. And that's what I meant by applying it to minimum cost spanning trees. Um, we're going to add links in order of cheapest cost so that no circuits form, so every vertex belongs to some link added. I'm just going to put as a star the mark down here, gives the, well, A, there could be more than one minimum cost spanning tree, gives a minimum cost spanning tree. While the previous algorithms didn't necessarily give the uh, minimum cost Hamiltonian circuit. So add links in order of cheapest cost so that no circuits form and so every vertex belongs to uh, some link added. Well, to do that we need to list our links in order of cheapest cost. So let's do that with this one. What do we have? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, skip 10 and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Add links in order of cheapest cost. So no circuits form, so every vertex belongs to some link added. Well, I'm going to do this again by filling in this graph. And I'm just going to uh, fit it over here. It should fit. Fine. And then we're going to uh, minimize total cost. We need the total cost. So what happens if we add 5? Where's 5? Five? 5 is this one. How about 6? Can we add 6? Yep, 6 is this one. What if we add 7? Well, 7 is this one right here. Connecting A to E. Maybe I should label these. 7 is this one. That creates a circuit. So we can't add 7. What about 8? Where's 8? 8 is up here. Okay, how about 9? Where's 9? 9 is down here. Maybe I should label them. 5, 6, there's 8. What happens if we add 9? Well, if we add 9, uh, it does not create a circuit. So we can add 9. But once we've added 9, look at this. We've hit all five vertices. So you don't even need to think of 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16. If you add any of those, um, that will just create redundancies. So right here, we have a minimum cost spanning tree. So is a minimum cost spanning tree. And what's the minimum cost? So I'll just say with cost, add the numbers 8 plus 6, 14 plus 14 is 28. Um, so Kruskal's algorithm does give exactly a minimum cost spanning tree. Let's look at another example. So here we're going to consider this road network with costs to construct uh, each uh, road segment. Um, just making sure I wrote the right number. Yeah, okay, I did. Um, this one does have duplicated numbers. We'll see that. Um, we'll see how to handle that as we handle it. Um, but here we're going to apply Kruskal's algorithm to find a minimum cost spanning tree. So if we have a minimum cost spanning tree, if we have a spanning tree here, it means you can drive from one place to another. So like, look at this road up here that costs 11 units. And if you want to get from here to here, well, it'd be nice to have that expensive road, but um, if you're constructing them, you'd probably prefer to make uh, that path going through one, five, and three. Um, so we're gonna uh, apply Kruskal's algorithm to this road network, and uh, I'm gonna, draw out the uh, edges here. The edges, vertices here. And I'm going to list out the costs here. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 15, 17. So let's make sure we don't miss any numbers. 1, 1. There's 1, 2. There are 3, 3's. There are three four fours. There are one two fives. There is a six, a seven, an eight, a ten, and an eleven. And is that all seventeen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, that's all seventeen. 
Um, so now let's just add edges starting at the bottom unless we can't. So what about those two ones? Yep, we can add those. One. One. What about the two? Can we add that? Yes. How about three threes? Can we add them? Well, let's start with one of them. Here's a three. That we can add. That doesn't create any cycles. Notice here, we're going to be piecing together a tree. And our goal is going to be to hit all of the edges. Or, uh, uh, to hit all of the vertices, um, and we don't need a cycle. So three, three, there's a third three somewhere right here. That's good. Uh, how about the fours? There are four fours. Uh, well, here's a four. We can add that. That's okay. Here's a four down here. We can add that. That helps us. That hits that vertex. Um, how about the next four? There's a four up here. Well, that's good. And uh, the fourth four is here, so we can add that. Oh, look at that. All of the things are working so far. How about the fives? Where are the fives? Well, look at what happens if we add this five. If we add this five here, then we create this cycle, this kind of Utah-shaped cycle. So we can't add that five, so let's cross it out. What about this other five? What if we add this? Well, again, that creates a cycle, so we can't add that five. How about the six? The six is down here, and we can add that. That doesn't create a cycle, so that's okay. And now we are connected. We hit all of the uh, vertices, so we are done. Um, you can continue if you want, and you'll find that you can't add anything else without creating redundancy. Um, seven would create a cycle. Where's eight? Eight creates a cycle. Ten creates a cycle. Eleven doesn't. Oh yeah, it does create a cycle. Eleven would create a big cycle there. So we don't add that. Don't add that. Don't add that. Don't add that. Here's the spanning tree, and what's the minimum cost? Well, what I should say, what's the cost? It is minimum. Cost equals. Well, we have to add these together. Ten, eleven, twelve, nineteen plus five, twenty-four plus. 7, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. And then you take a step back and make sure you added properly. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24, 30, 5. I, I lost count halfway through. That's too many numbers. Uh, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that makes 20, 24, 27, 31, 32, 35. Okay, so we have a minimum cost spanning tree, and the cost is 35 units. Um, and this doesn't have to just be a road network. This could be a lot of things. This could be, you know, like a, an electric company wants to uh, provide power to a bunch of different locations. Well, this uh, power line setup would work. It could be... Um, I don't know, like a water system trying to provide water to a bunch of different locations. I mean, all of these have many different applications. Um, but Kruskal's algorithm does give a minimum cost spanning tree. It's different than the nearest neighbor and the sorted edges algorithms of last week in that they didn't necessarily give the minimum cost Hamiltonian cycle. But Kruskal's algorithm does minimize the cost.